Hi everybody, welcome to this week's module where we're going to discuss the roots of jazz. In this class you're going to see what the African influences and the European influences are and we're going to focus a lot on this music, two kinds of music that were the primary, what I like to call the mother and father of jazz. Without either of these we would not have jazz. So one of the first is the blues. The blues is a very older music, much older than jazz, and a lot of things were involved in the blues. First of all, you learned from last week how the blues was a very simple form, 12 bars. blues. Blues can be fast, they can be slow, they can have lyrics, they can just be instrumental. Either way the blues are the blues and what establishes the blues is not only the, the simple 12 bar form but that within the, in the context of performing it the blues can have very rough timbre, can have bent pitches and you'll see all those in the, with the week's demonstrations. So the blues is a very very old form. The other, what I like to think of as the parent of jazz, is an early music called Ragtime. Ragtime was in the 1890s. It was a very uh, popular music. It was originally developed by African American musicians, specifically pianists who played in saloons and bars and every other kind of place. And it was a party music. It was designed for people to have good times to. You know, you go to a restaurant, and you're eating, you don't want to be eating in silence. It's nice to have some music going on in the background. So the hallmark of ragtime is something called syncopation. Before ragtime came on the scene, musically, popular music, everything was right on the beat. Something like this. <laughs> Well, in music, there's something called syncopation, which is a musical device that offsets the melody to not on the beat, but to off the beat. Now, these African-American pianists that developed this new music, it was so new and so different that a lot of listeners, when they first heard it, felt that, wait a second, I'm used to right here, and now it's not on the beat. So I can take that tune that I just played that very simple march. That's right on the beat. Now I will syncopate it. shifting in places that are unexpected and when people first heard this music they felt that the time is not correct the time is all ragged so it became ragtime now originally the music was a music of uh, very simple you know just kind of an improvised kind of kind of honky-tonk music. It took a genius like Scott Joplin, a trained composer, to come along, took this music and crafted it into something different. In 1899 he published his famous rag, The Maple Leaf Rag, and once that was published it broke open ragtime into the mainstream. <laughs> into the mainstream, ragtime became America's most popular music. So what happened when jazz started evolving in New Orleans? All the musicians knew that we're going to play music that our audience wants to hear. 
We're going to play blues. We're going to play ragtime. We're going to play marches. And they took all of these things and they put it into one kind of music. And they took into jazz, they took the blues and the bent pitches and the rough sounds and the earthiness. They took the syncopation of ragtime, shifting those beats, shifting those meters, and together blues and ragtime became the mother and father of jazz. So I hope you enjoy your assignments this week, and we'll see you next week.